we're in a series of really focusing on discipleship. I um, believe very much that God's really uh, just catching, just stirring our hearts again. And really what that means, and I think it's helpful last week when Cheryl referred to a book by John Mark Homer, and he uses the phrase apprentice. You know, often, you know, we're not quite sure what disciples means in modern speak, but apprentice is a good word. And basically it means not just reading the manual, but actually being learning the ways of the master. That's what an apprentice does. Doesn't just read a how-to book, but actually learns the skills and the ways. And discipleship is really about being with Jesus, becoming like him, and learning to do the things he did and is doing. That's discipleship. But one of the other things is that we find when Jesus called those first disciples, he called them, one by, by name, but he called them into community. He called Simon and Andrew, his brother. And then he called James and John, other brothers. And then, just to put in the mix, he called um, a zealot, Simon, the zealot who had particular political views, the nationalist of his time. And then he called um, Matthew, a tax collector who happened to be working for the Roman authorities at that time. Quite a mixed bunch. And Jesus called them together as his disciples. And some of the big lessons they learned in discipleship was through community. And so it is for us. Let's have a quick look around. We're very different, aren't we? Now, I'm not asking the nationalists to put up their hand or the tax collector or anything like that, but there can be all sorts of different viewpoints, different opinions, but actually what joins us is this journey of following Jesus and wanting to be with him, to be like him, and to do what he's called us to do. And it's in community. And it's in that context, it's really helpful for us to focus on small groups. They have an important part to play in the church. It's so important, I think, we see small groups as part of the community that God's called us to be. There are other expressions of that in local church life, but that's where it belongs. It's part of our journey together. You know, following Jesus is not a solo adventure, but he calls us together. We learn from one another. We, we're to grow together. And really what I want to do is just land four words. You know, it, uh, I mean, I say a few words around each four words, but just a few four words that hopefully will stick in our minds about uh, really the purpose and, and some of the values of small groups. But first of all, can I just start with a confession? Isn't it interesting? Do you want me to say it again? Shall I start with a confession? I was expecting, oh yes! <laughs> Everyone loves a juicy confession. Okay, so just to start with a confession is that um, I'm part of a small group, but I must be the world's worst attender. I'm looking at members of my group, and <laughs> Ed is, um, Edmund is shaking his head um, furiously there. Um, I, I could give reasons, really, why I'm just not able to go, but I, I don't think that's helpful. I think it's just helpful for me to say there's a gap between what I believe and what I practice. And I think that can sometimes be the case in other parts of our lives, that what we believe is different to what we practice. And I think part of discipleship is, as it were, closing that gap. And part of the process of working with small groups has been a challenge to me, actually, personally. In fact, I'm speaking on my behalf, not on Cheryl's behalf, because she's a good attender at, uh, at a small group. But it's been a bit of a challenge to me uh, really to narrow 
that gap. And to be honest, when we talked about this, the core team, I said, I think I'm the worst person to speak on small groups. But no one else offered. So, oh, yes, you did, Dave. Yes, you did. Okay. But actually, they were encouraging. So, no, it would be good for you to land, though, what we believe. So, here you go. Four words. Okay? First one is this. It's to connect. The church is a body. And we're joined not only to the head, but to one another. And we need smaller settings where we can connect to one another in a way that's just not possible in a bigger setting. You know, this type of Sunday morning has a certain feel to it, it has certain priorities to it. It's, you know, but even this very dynamic now, hopefully you're kind of listening-ish to me, is not connecting to one another. A small group allows that more personal, that interflow of connections. That's why uh, having coffee, chatting, eating together, all of that is important in small group. That's not just a warm-up. It's important. It's about building relationships together. And small groups aren't unique in that, but they can have a vital role in fostering it. It can be a place where actually you can share with each other's joys and griefs. You give time to being together. You grow together as family and friends. And it can be a place to invite people into. It's about connection. Expressing our lives together in Jesus by connecting with one another. It's about encourage, encouragement. And encouragement is a core value of the local church. We can, write, we can read in Hebrews, uh, let's not forget to meet together, uh, as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another. And it's one of the clear purposes, whatever meeting, hopefully this is encouraging you in your walk with God this morning. But small group is there to encourage us. Um, in West Cumbria, we have a quite a strong running community. And uh, some of you are part of that, others of you aren't. But one of, the, one of the key developments over recent years has been Park Run. And it's quite a phenomenon. It's, it's nationwide, it's now worldwide. But it's a thing that's built on encouragement. No one will be last. You can run whatever your age, whatever your ability, whatever your speed. If you've never run before in your life, you can run or walk. No one's going to be last. It's a, it's a rich encouragement. Now, I'm not making a plea for part run. Don't mishear me. But we're all called to run a race. There is a race set out for each one of us. Again, it's that race of discipleship. And actually, we need to be with, alongside and for one another so we can encourage. Encourage, encourage, encourage. That's one of the key things of being together in a small group as in other settings. And then care, third word, um, to encourage one another belongs actually in a bigger collection of one another's and there's care for one another. And all those are rooted into actually Jesus' command he gave his disciples, which is we're to love one another. We're to love one another as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's John 13. And so loving one another is like, that's the spring from which all these other one another's spring out, flow out. And one of them is to care. And being in a smaller setting gives, again, it, it, the opportunity to care for one another. Be aware of what's going on in each other's lives. That can't happen on a Sunday. It can happen in a small group. The joys, the sadnesses, the challenges. 
Even some of those things we're speaking the name of Jesus over. We can do that on a Sunday. But some of the stories, that can be shared in small group. There can be care, support, expressed in many, many different ways. It's to care for one another. And then the, 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 the fourth word, so it's connect, encourage, care. And the fourth word is to grow. It's to grow together. Different small groups, as Becca said, will have different emphasis. Some might, emphasis, uh, some might emphasize more reading the Bible together. Others might have more of a prayer emphasis. Some might have more of a coffee and chat emphasis. But that's not just a random set of activities. All those are different aspects of our discipleship or following Jesus. And actually, if there's a core aim, it's this, that we want to grow together to be with Jesus, to be like Jesus, and to be doing the things that Jesus has called us to, to be his apprentices. And just being together in a smaller setting, it allows us to perhaps have conversations to open ourselves up, to be accountable, to be honest about stuff. Actually, to confess, as I've just done, about something, I'm really struggling with this. It allows for things like that, that allows us to grow together in Christ. Last week, Cheryl helped focus us on our personal devotion with Christ. What we're doing this week, small groups, help us focus on our corporate, our community, our together walk with Christ. And we need one another. So there you go. You've got the process, where we are, some new groups starting, some existing groups continuing. But let's step into it with a freshness. Let's rise to this call of discipleship. That's where it belongs.